Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips and how I did this graphite drawing of this girl in summertime. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Great paper this is, it's Strathmore Bristol Smooth, this is what I'll be using for this drawing. Now the value system I'm using is 9 values, 4 lights, 4 darks and a mid-tone. The first thing I do is put a centre point into my area I'm drawing, which is an 8 inch by 8 inch. And then I do the same on the reference image. So from that centre point, I'm using imaginary angles and comparing shapes with each other, getting sort of the big areas in first, very lightly putting the lines in using a HB pencil and keeping the sort of movement quite loose and just getting a feel for it. To get them loose marks is to hold the pencil quite a long distance away from the point. And then just firming up then really, just going over the, the faint lines you've put in and then just rebalancing everything by checking the angles with each other and proportions. This is a handy tool to have in your kit. It's a Tombow Mono Zero eraser and you can sculpt your lines with it. Just, you know, put a few lines in and then just move them and make them sharper with that eraser. I'll slow things down into real time now so you can see how I'm using the pencil on a horizontal plane and the vertical plane to check the alignment from one shape to the other. I tend not to name things so I don't say oh I'm just going to do this eye now or nose or mouth because that can cause tension uh, because you start to think about it too much. If you just see everything as shapes, light and form and movement and just draw that so at the moment we're drawing the outline so you're just checking one shape against another and just getting a general feel uh, because you should get that sort of feeling of the person even in the outline now the second eye is always the hardest one to draw now if you're left-handed you best to draw the right eye as you're seeing it and then do the left at the end where I'm right handed so I do the left as I see the picture and do the right one at the end that way you can see the whole then again with the fingers just compare one shape against the other to get the length of them uh, but just again see them as just shapes rather than fingers if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos now here's the close-up view of the nine value system I'm using, which is four lights, four darks and a mid-tone. Now each one of these segments I've numbered, but above them I've put 4H, 2H, H, HB, B, 2B and 4B and 8B. For each value I initially used those pencils. So you just visually see what's on the reference image, get a close tone to it and then use that pencil to fill in that area. Now obviously the white of the paper is the lightest value so everywhere else has got to be filled in so that's what I tend to do is just fill in all the area with some sort of graphite so it kills that white paper and then you'll be able to see the, the tones more clearly then. What you'll find is that you, you tend to put it lighter in to start with and eventually it gets darker and darker as you start to progress with the values. Now the darkest areas around the eye, the makeup there is quite dark, it's more or less black. So by putting that in and then I've got the white of the paper, then in between then it gives me an idea of, of the other values, it gives me something to work against. Now this eye did actually cause me quite uh, some some work because it was very difficult 
to get the angle right. Um, it's quite an interesting drawing to do. Uh, she's tilting to one side, so uh, you know it's all in perspective. So it's quite interesting to try and get that correct. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough, it means so much to me. If you are considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth video, please check out the link in the description below. Just slowing it down to real time now, just showing you how I'm working more on them eyes, but using this tool here, again, which is a mono zero eraser, I won't be without this tool, it's amazing. You can sculpt your way through it, you know, you can just move things around. It really, it, it actually uh, erases very cleanly as well, but just reshaping everything, making sure that that eye is not too big. And it was quite an awkward eye to do, to be fair, uh, but I managed to get there in the end. You just got to keep persevering, that's the key. Never give up. If you ever find a difficulty, just keep keep going. Uh, just keep opening your heart, just let go of the mind, and just focus on connecting to the energy. And send this open heart and feeling to the actual reference image. What you'll find is you'll get more emotion come back and more feeling from the reference image. And that can be transferred through you, out of your hands, into your work. Now this is a great tool, it's a little bit of a brush, a very stiff brush, from the Perfection Eraser, Faber-Castell, and it's really handy because it gets rid of those little eraser bits, and uh, if you're not careful that gets trapped into the graphite if you don't clear it away. Now I decided to actually just fade the drawing into the white of the background rather than doing all the background in graphite. Uh, just keep it sort of loose looking and more arty as well really I think. Now with the hair you have to sort of feel the movement and the flow of it and just see it as blocks of shapes and shades and then it don't freak you out with all that detail then because if you look at all the the strands of hair it can sort of freeze you with the thought of all the actual uh, intricacy of it so if you just start big using big shapes and get smaller and smaller it becomes easier then Just slowing it down here so you can see how I'm doing the hair. And I'm using a Lyra 9B Rembrandt brand pencil. And it's a really great pencil this is for, for filling in large areas because you can vary the pressure of the pencil and it creates different tones. But we don't create the grain which you usually get with a, a 9B or 8B. So it's really handy to have in your kit. Now there's a list of materials in the description below with links if you want to find out more information about the actual materials I'm using. Now to make it easy to shape the strands of hair and the blocks of sort of flow if you like, I'm using the Tombow Monozero Eraser to sort of take away the graphite and reshape it and then just go over them with different grades of graphite to create the correct value. So it's a case of using it to sculpture your way through. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. More work on the eyes. The eyes tend to be the mirror of the soul, as I say, but I tend to try and get that energy in everything, no matter what I'm doing. I try and get a, a oneness. Uh, there's energy in the hand, the hair, the hat, the atmosphere around the person as well. I try and connect to everything and become one with it and try and transfer that.
Now for the hands, um, very interesting hands are to draw because the fingers, when you draw them, they don't look right at all, uh, not as you assume they should look like. Uh, it's only when you start putting the form in there, the light and shade, that things start to shape up. So you have to really be aware of that and just um, just persevere really, because uh, they do eventually come together. It, they just look like sausages to start with. So uh, just see them as light and shade and shapes, like I mentioned, and don't name them as fingers. And just continue drawing them like you would draw anything else. Same with the hair as well, you just got to keep persevering, just keep putting that graphite on, just using that eraser and build it up and build it up and eventually it will come together in the end. Now I kept the background quite loose, that made it look a little bit more arty really, so uh, rather than doing the whole thing, I've just done a segment and let it sort of melt into it so the brightness of the paper makes it more even shinier and brighter like sunshine and I'll just put a little bit of foliage to each side of her just so it feels like she's sitting in a in a field uh, and just create that sort of freshness with it with very light pencils So build it up like crisscrossing and then just use your eraser, that was the kneadable eraser, the Faber-Castell and also the Tombow eraser there. So I'm using both there just to sort of create the sort of feeling I'm wanting. Always seems to be the easiest way is just to put that graphite in and then just take out with the rubber a different pressure. More pressure it gets whiter, less pressure it's more greyer. So just play about with that sort of needle ball eraser and it's, it's a great tool to use. For the details in the hat, I've got the actual graphite down in there first and then I'm using the mono zero eraser then to create the actual pattern in there because it's a straw hat so I'm just taking away the graphite to create the pattern that I'm wanting. It's just a case of just letting go and feeling it. I'm not trying to put everything exactly the same. It's my suggestion of what that hat is. Um, so, I mean, you could spend hours and hours and hours getting everything exactly the same as that. But what my thoughts of that is that you must have a photograph blown up, you know, it's it's more about your interpretation that's where I'm coming from at the moment is just to keep things nice and loose and a suggestion here and a suggestion there now what I'm leaning on there is glassine paper now it's really special paper that actually it's very hard to smudge your work underneath it especially designed that way um, so it's really good to have if you can get hold of some of that now the list of the materials are in the description below so there's links there so you can find more detail about it. Just to mention my Patreon again, if you would like to see this drawing as a real-time audio, real-time video, please check out the link in the description below for more details. I'm slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm shaping up the fingers now. These are the final details. Uh, it makes all the difference, you know, some areas are sharper, some are softer. So you have to work out which part needs to be sharpened up and which part needs to be sort of soft. And it's just a case of feeling it really and feel what needs to project forward it tends to have a sharp edge on it and what needs to recede tends to be soft. And what I'm doing here is using that Monozero eraser to place some highlights on those nails as well and just refining everything just to make them more delicate. With the final details I tend to stand back a, a lot, look in the mirror, so look at a mirror over my shoulders seeing a different view of it 
even take a photograph with the mobile phone and see how it looks on there. All these sort of methods brings out sort of areas that you probably wouldn't see if you didn't do it. Um, it's just giving you a fresh perspective on it. Even taking it into another room, I've heard of people turn the drawing upside down and have a look at it from there. All these different things. Um, but try and get like a oneness with it. So I tend to sort of feel the energy and feel what what's sort of projecting out. And if your drawing doesn't feel that way, it needs a bit of work. So you have to work out how to change things up and put more subtleties in to create the overall atmosphere. So these last little touches is all about getting that atmosphere and the oneness. Really appreciate you watching the drawing right till the end. Here's the actual image, full on view of it, rather than being in perspective. Now, if you want to see more of my work, please check out this link here. Take care. Bye for now.